Welcome back to the program. Now let's bring you some of our stories in brief. We begin with the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Lusani Usani, who has thrown his weight behind the re-election bid of President Mohamed Dabari, while also calling on the people of Cross River State to vote in March for the President come Saturday. According to the Minister, the federal government through the Niger Delta Ministry has embarked on massive developmental projects across the state, some of which are road infrastructure, rural electrification, job employment, amongst others. Be 16 and March the second elections according to the stipulated rules. Now the resident electoral commissioner there made the remark during an interactive session with stakeholders in Lafia. He urged all concerned parties to follow suit as to ensure a free, fair and credible election in the state. Elsewhere, the National Orientation Agency, NOA, is expressing concern over what it describes as fake news, hate speech and mudslinging aimed at instilling fear of possible violence in some parts of the country during the forthcoming general elections. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the Director General of the agency, Dr. Gaba Bari, says it is worrisome that some Nigerians have been making arrangements to temporarily relocate from their places of residence before the election as a result of hate speeches and mudslinging. Well, let's take you now to Imo State, which appears to be one of the places to watch in the forthcoming elections as they have the highest number of governorship candidates. Well, our uh, Imo State uh, correspondent, Ito Kwekuti, tells us more about what's happening there. It's a few days to the presidential and national assembly elections, and both the APC and PDP presidential candidates were in a worry to canvass for votes. However, one of the statements that's been the talking point in one of the rallies, which is the APC presidential campaign rally, is that of President Muhammad Dubari. While canvassing for votes for his re-election bid, he advised electorates in Imo State to vote across party lines in the March 2nd governorship elections. Remember in 2015, after APC was declared winner of the presidential elections, big wigs from other political parties defected to the APC, which no doubt had effect on the results of the governorship elections. And remember, the Imo State Governor, Rocha Sokorocha, who is contesting for the Imo West Senatorial seat under the APC, is also canvassing for votes and supporting the Action Alliance governorship candidate, Uche Ungosu, against the wish of the APC National Working Committee. Maybe the result of this weekend's presidential and national assembly election will have effect on voting pattern and the result of the March 2nd governorship elections in Imo State. We'll wait and see. Eito Kwekutei, Channel Television News. We have a story that's just breaking just in that the Code of Conduct Tribunal has issued a bench warrant ordering the arrest and subsequent arraignment of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Noge, in court on Friday. Now we hear that the tribunal also directed the director of the DSS to join in arresting uh, Justice Onoge and compel him to be at the tribunal. We'll bring you more details as we get them. But staying with, of course, election issues and security ahead of the elections, we have joining us from our Abuja studios the director, and that is the former, rather, director of the Department of State Services, Mr. Mike Ejofor. Uh, I would like to thank you so much for joining us at this time on uh, Lunchtime Politics and ask you uh, what your thoughts are ahead of the um, security preparations ahead of uh, the elections. We know that the DSS has said it is committed to providing adequate security. But uh, you have, of course, conducted elections. You've been there. Um, what is the DSS functions primarily to ensure that it doesn't perhaps... Uh, what's the synergy between the DSS and other security apparatus? Well, I think uh, there is a synergy between the the lead agency, which is the police, in, the, in providing security for the conduct of the election between the police and the state security service, as it, as it were. And um, 
But one gets worried with uh, recent development uh, because I had thought that this election will go smoothly, though it's not unexpected that we'll have some little skirmishes. When you say you um, thought? I am particularly worried on the issue of uh, what happened in Anambra State because only on Monday, the Inspector General of Police directed, I believe based on intelligence, that all INEC offices be protected from all these uh, suspected uh, attacks. And here we are. Uh, the attack is on, uh, it took place yesterday, and over 4,000 uh, PVC machines were burnt. That's not healthy for us. And I think the IG, the acting IG, should take steps to hold personally the Commissioner of Police in Anambra State vicariously liable for what happened. Because if he had not given the, the directive, one would say perhaps they were not aware. But having given the directive, I think uh, it's worrisome that the incident happened. And not only in uh, Anambra State, it's, hap it's happened in other states. Uh, I believe that the acting inspector general of police should also reorder and re-strategize these uh, uh, operational measures so that uh, when um, such incidents happen again, it will be taken more seriously because Nigeria is in the eye of the storm. So a lot of people we have been expecting. If I may, a lot of people have been smelling, smelling the rats. If I may uh, use that phrase, do you suspect foul play? I know investigations are still ongoing. We know that even for Anambra, uh, the commissioner of police is meeting with the governor there, and you know we really don't exactly know what happened. Um, Well, well I, I personally suspect a foul play, but investigation will reveal what actually happened and the people behind uh, the scene. Like I was saying, Nigeria is in the eye of the storm. This is a test case for Nigeria and the rest of Africa. If you recall that we have over 19 countries in, in Africa conducting elections this year. So this is a, a litmus test for other African countries who are coming to uh, witness the election. You can see the, the number of high-profile observers from international uh, organizations and uh, other countries coming to witness it. And I'm also consoled that um, a peace accord had just been signed by the various uh, political parties. But it shouldn't end at just signing the accord because these are paperwork. The political parties should now go back the leadership of the various political parties to prevail on their, lead, on their followers to be law abiding and not disrupt this election. Uh, I think there was a, a, a peace uh, initiative also conducted last, last week by Good Luck Jonathan Foundation. It shouldn't end on this. We must commend them for that. But I also expect that Mr. President should between now and Friday make a national broadcast because the primary responsibility of government is protection of life and property make a national broadcast assuring the citizens and prevailing on the political parties and their leadership to ensure we have a, a smooth uh, election. Well, I'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Michael Joe, for former Director, Department of State Security, for joining us on the program. That's how we we'll wrap things up at this time, and of course, uh, all of the discussions taking place ahead of the general elections. We'd like to thank you so much for watching Channel Television, your home for the news. I'm Millicent Walker.